Welcome to Sunk Coast. This is uh, another video of the uh, four to five churches in Transylvania, Romania, and uh, another little village that was founded by the old Transylvania Saxon community uh, that I've been talking about and showing for the past two years in my videos. Very impressive places, typically a uh, church surrounded by walls, fortified walls, and for the uh, defense of the local villagers who would gather in there when they would be attacked. I've talked about this at length in some of my other videos. Here what I would like to focus on is uh, what happened to the Saxon community after centuries of living in this little village and how they virtually disappeared out of Birtan. And in particular there is a story that I'd like to share with you that I've read about which I found touching and uh, very powerful. Stories about Sarah Romischer, I'm not sure how to say it in uh, Old Saxon or German. Old Saxon and German are different languages. Old Saxon is closer to the language spoken in Luxembourg, but it's an old language that no one else speaks except for this group of people. She was born in 1919, and uh, when she was 26 years old, she was deported to Siberia. And it's a very sad and painful story, which uh, she describes almost detached in her memoirs. She wrote, I remember that in 1945, like uh, with many other Saxons in Transylvania, between 18 to 35 years old, we were taken by force to work in Russia. It was 16th of January, and the weather was good and a little warm without snow. On that day, we were taken away from our children, our parents, our brothers and sisters. On that day, I tried to hide somewhere on our property in a place that I could be uh, shielded. I hid in the manger where there was hay for the animals. I wasn't afraid to be there at night alone because my fear was much greater for leaving my kids and letting them grow up without a mother, never knowing if I would ever see them again. The third day, while I was sitting around 4 o'clock in the morning, my father-in-law came to me and said that he would go in, in my place. And I couldn't let him do that, so I came out of the hiding place and I went home. I packed a few heavy clothes and all the food. At that point, my husband was still in the German army and the Russians were searching for us. They took me away on that very day. I left Birton on foot in a line like slaves. We were lucky that it was good weather. For years afterwards, my mind was still remembering the ringing of the bells of the church. No one could get away from the line. Fifty meters away, there was a Russian soldier who was threatening us with his gun. They kept us in Mediash for two days, and after that, they had gathered many people from the different areas in Sibiu. 32 train cars were filled with our young people, all of them, in the youth of their life. From amongst them, very few would return home. On January 24, 1945, men, women, all together, we were put in cattle trains that were filled with lice. For seven days, we traveled by train, and eventually it stopped. It was the night of February 2nd, 1945. We looked outside the window between the cracks of the car, and they were taking us down, and then they were putting us back in the cars. We were about 30 people in one car. Near us, there was another soldier with a gun, so that no one would be able to run away. Konstantinovka Donbass was the end of the line for us. There, at one point, there was a large industrial city, but because of the war, it was in disrepair. We walked in line one after the other, and all we had in mind was to get away from the wind and to be in a bed, or at least a place that would be shielded from the wind, because it was terribly cold and the winds were blowing in the Russian steppes. We arrived at a building in terrible disrepair, without doors or windows. Inside was colder than outside. There was no question of sleeping or resting. They put us all in one spot to wash us. That was good. And then afterwards we were taken to the medic, and then it was morning. We were so hungry and tired, we were barely walking. There was no thought of talking to each other. There was always silence, and we never knew what would happen to us. And then a voice would yell, Devai Bakusat, which meant, let's go and eat. But 
who understood that. We didn't know what was going on, and some men translated. They gave us some kind of a liquid that cabbage had been in. There were no leaves of cabbage. It was just water with salt and the taste of cabbage. There were about 1,500 people there. That became our food every day, that clear cabbage soup. But I was young and strong. We were there from Mediash, Bratiu, Rakesh, Atzel, Valavilar, Depush, Birtan, and Shoarsh, all young, between 18 to 35. It was very hard to describe how we passed the first two years. Hunger, cold, lice in our hair, lice in our clothes, on us, we were starving. Including the Russians, they didn't have much to eat either, just like us. We caught a few dogs and cats, and I ate cat meat. Hunger hurts. Hunger hurts all the time. For three years, they gave us only that salty, cabbagey liquid. The men, especially, would get sick because women would take care of themselves differently and they endured. I saw how the men pulled grass so that they could ease their hunger. That's the way it was. We ate flowers and leaves and always I was thinking that I had to have something in my stomach because all they gave us was this dry bread at four o'clock in the morning. And until the next morning at the same time, all we had was that clear, salty cabbage soup. After three years, there appeared some money for the Russians. Only a lot of them had died because of the cold and hunger. Five years, I slept on a bare wooden floor. The lice would eat us all the time. We were all so hungry and they were sucking us. We had these deep creases on our faces. But they sent us home and they gave us 10 days to rebuild ourselves. All I wrote here is true, although I have so much more to say. Sarah Romisher died in 2006 at home in Birtan. Her motto was, all I have, I take with me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, a bit sad, I thought, because that really was representative of what happened to the, the Transylvanian Saxons in, um, in Romania after the war. They were uh, treated by the Soviets as, uh, by the communists, as, as uh, Nazi collaborators, and uh, they suffered greatly. I'm sure like many other people, but, but their story needs to be told, just like any other story. Hope you enjoyed my video. Please subscribe. Thank you.